Bibles and open them to 1 Samuel 29. Now, if you're looking on the screen behind me, beside that crown, that's Hebrew for 1 Samuel. That's how 1 Samuel is written in Hebrew. I could act smart and say that I know Hebrew, and that's how I know it, but no, I looked it up. But that's what it says, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 29, and we are going to look at verses 1 through 11. We're about to conclude the study that we have been in for a good while. 1 Samuel 29. Now, what I want you to do before we actually look into this particular passage of Scripture, I want you to go back and look at chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. And let's get just a little bit of a background of what's going on here. In chapter 27, verses 1 and 2, David, who was the man after God's heart, the one who loved, was loved by, by the Lord and was anointed by Samuel, to be the king of Israel, had been fleeing all his life, basically, from King Saul, who wanted to have him killed. Well, Saul finally, at the end of chapter 26, Saul finally said, All right, David, I recognize you're going to be the king. Go your way. I'll go my way. But David didn't trust that. So we find in chapter 27, 1 and 2, David said in his heart, and again, when someone speaks within themselves or says something in the heart, it's like they're silently talking to themselves. David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than I should speedily escape to the land of the Philistines. How ridiculous of a thing for him to do. The Philistines were the enemies to Israel and had fought Israel in many a battle. And here he is going to Philistia to hide out there. He said, may I go to the Philistines? And he said, Saul shall then despair of, of me. That is, Saul will give up hope of trying to find me. He will to seek me anymore in any coast of Israel. So shall I escape out of his hand? And David arose, and he passed over with the 600 men. David has 600 trained soldiers who would go with him into Philistia. And when they went there, they went into Achish, the son of Maok, who was the king of Gath. And I asked the question a couple of weeks ago, and I said, who, what is the significance here of him going to Gath? Well, it's this. Goliath, the big giant of whom David killed with the, the three stones, and the, the, or with the one stone, rather. It didn't take him three stones. One stone, I don't know why I said three. But with the one stone and the slingshot, he brought that big man down. And Goliath was from Gath. So he goes to Gath and Philistia and meets up with Gath's king, which is Achish, and he strikes up a friendship, and they work out a deal in that they, the king of Gath, Achish, gives him a land called the land of Ziklag for David and his 600 men and for all of their families to live in. And they lived there for about a year and four months, I believe it was, around 16 months they would live there. Then I want you to look at chapter 28, verse 1. And this is what we looked at a couple of weeks ago. And it says, There it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel. What else is new? The Philistines were always fighting against the Israelites. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me into battle. Thou and thy men. David now is in a, a, a mass. Sure indeed. Why David would not want to fight his own countrymen from Israel, would he? Certainly he would not want to do that. But he is in a hard place here right now. And it's all because of his own doing. When David should have trusted the Lord and realized as it says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that a call according to his purpose, when David should have 
trusted the Lord. Instead, he looked at the circumstances and thought that if I hang around in Israel, I'll be killed by Saul, even though God had told David himself that he would be the king. Why would God lie to David? God said, David, you will be the king, and you will be anointed, and you will be put on the throne. And yet David did not trust that. He worried, like many of us do. And a lot of times we get into a hard, difficult place in life. Instead of trusting God, what do we end up doing? Sometimes we will regress and go out into the world to find our answers. Some people will go to drastic places to find answers in the world, and it won't help them. In fact, a lot of times we'll end up in a very bad situation, very worse than what we were in to start with, and it's never a good thing to try to solve our own dilemmas and problems in life by going back into the world. Instead, we need to trust God and weather the storm and say, God, you promised me in your word you'll never leave me nor forsake me, so I'm going to walk with you. I can't walk without you holding my hand, so God, hold my hand and walk me through this and help me. Got to trust him. David didn't do that. He said, well, this is David, the king of Israel. David wasn't perfect. He was a picture of Christ who is the son of David. And Christ is the only one who was never with sin in his life. David, like Moses, like Joshua, like Abraham, like Paul, like any of these others, he was not perfect. So David, you know, he, here he is uh, regressing and going into the land of Philistia. And everything's going all right until war is about to take place. And King Achish says, David, come on to our side and fight against the Israelites. He's probably thinking, but now I've got to please the king who has given us this land in Ziklag, but I don't want to fight my own countrymen. The only way, only way David can get out of this mess is if God rescues him. Only way. Well, I want you now to look with me as we go to 28, verse 5. And this is what we looked at two weeks ago. The king of Israel, Saul, he's the man in charge. He's the man in charge of the Israelites and the Israelite army. And Saul has lost his fellowship with God. God is now no longer answering Saul. Look at 28, verse 5. And there it says this, and when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, that is the big, massive, well-trained army of the Philistines, when Saul saw them, did he have courage? Did he have strength? Did he have confidence? No, it says when Saul saw them, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. So what did Saul, the king who was in charge of the Israelites, do who were about to go into war with the Philistines? And he didn't know that David was over there with King Achish and that King Achish is trying to get David to fight against the Israelites. God forbid would David ever do something like that, but David's in a hard place now. How's he going to get out of it? We'll see. But Saul was greatly afraid. He called upon God. God did not answer him by a dream, nor by a vision, nor by the Urim and the Thummim, the lights and perfections of the priest. And the, he, he did not hear an answer from God. So what did he do? He found a witch at a place called Endor, and he went to her and asked her to help him bring up Samuel. And we, we delved into the scripture and tried to figure that thing out and comprehend it and understand it as Samuel was brought up. But I'm going to tell you something. It was not by any satanic witchcraft. It was all by God allowing it to happen to reveal to Saul what is about to happen to him. As Samuel said, Saul, on this day, you and your sons will join me in death. So, Saul is in a bad place. He's out in darkness now. 
David's in a hard place, not knowing what to do. And these countries, like countries of today, sometimes they have these big military parades. Well, that's about what we're going to see here just now. So look at chapter 29, verse 1. The Philistines, they gathered together all their armies to a place called Aphek, and the Israelites pitched by a fountain which is in Jezreel. Now, the lords of the Philistines, who were the lords of the Philistines? And notice that Lord there is spelled with a little L. That's the only one that spelled with a capital L would be the Lord Jesus Christ, who's worthy of that. But these are lords of the Philistines. What does that mean? The lords of the Philistines are the kings of five city-states in Philistia. And if you would go to chapter 6, verse 17, you will find a listing of those five city-states. Philistia was made of five city-states, and they were Gaza, Escalon, Estad, Ekron, and Gath. David was in Gath with the king of Gath. The lords of the Philistines passed on by hundreds and by thousands. What a massive, big military parade this is. Hundreds upon thousands of Philistine soldiers. David and his men passed on in the re-reward with Achish. Uh, Achish. The word re-reward there means rear. So David and his army of 600 soldiers are marching in the back of this parade, understandably so, because they're not Philistines. They're Israelites. They really had no business being in that parade. But King Achish wanted David to be with them. So they're marching in the rear. Now, the princes of the Philistines, that is debatable. I couldn't figure this out as I tried to study it. I'm not sure the princes are the generals of the Philistine armies or if they were the kings who were also called lords. But it says the princes, whatever the case is, it's really irrelevant. That the main thing is they were leaders, government and military leaders of Philistia. So the princes of the Philistines said, what do these Hebrews, what are they here for? What are these Hebrews, what is that Hebrew army in this parade? This is a parade of the Philistine army. What are the Hebrews in the back end of this parade for? And Achish, who was the king who had struck up the friendship with David and wanted David to fight with them, Achish said to the princes of the Philistines, is not this David? David, the servant of Saul, the king of Israel, which hath been with me these days or these years, actually a year and four months. And I found no fault in him since he fell to me unto this day. I, I like the language there, since he fell to me. He did fall, in a sense, right there and to where Achish was. And Achish says to the other lords or princes in that parade, I wanted David in this battle. I want David and his 600 men to fight with us against the Israelites. And by the way, he doesn't say it here, but he probably said they can probably help us learn some things that would help us in our strategy. Because he's one of them and he can help us and tell us about them and and how to attack them, and when, and where, and all this and that. So the princes of the Philistines, it says in verse 4, were accepting to it? No, they were wroth. The word wroth, of course, means angry. They were very angry with, with uh, King Achish. The princes of the Philistines said to him, Make this fella, talking about David, Make this fella return, that he may go again to the place where you have appointed him, that is Ziglag. And let him not go down with us into battle, lest in the battle he be an adversary to us. So King Achish is thinking David might can help them with their strategy. But the other lords or the other kings or the other generals said, no, 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 we can't trust him. He is David. He might turn on us and get his soldiers to fight against us we can't risk that. We can't have that. Send him back where you let him live for this past year and a half. 
sent him back there. I said, we can't have this. Latter part of verse 4, it said, it, should it not be with the heads of these men? In other words, the lords or the, the kings of the Philistine city said, if we let David and his army fight with us, they might kill some of our own men. And then someone spoke up, don't know who, but someone spoke up and said, verse 5, is this not David of whom they sang? And one of the dances sang, Saul slew his thousands and David his ten thousands. Remember that? You can look that up in chapter 18. And that's when all the women were singing the song. And that's what riled up the anger of Saul to start with. That's why I got Saul so angry with David and wanted to have David killed because everyone was bragging on and talking about all of the military accomplishments of David far exceeding that of Saul's. So there's a lot of jealousy there. So someone is saying he's not just an Israelite. He's the hero of the Israelites. He is that valiant and courageous and mighty soldier and military leader that killed tens of thousands of people and his own king only killed thousands and they made a song about him. That song had traveled around. People had heard it. They said he's not just an ordinary Israelite soldier. That's David. We cannot have him fighting in our battle, in our war against Israel when he might turn on us. He might use that as an opportunity to make up with King Saul and get on King Saul's good side. So that's all going through their minds. Verse 6, Achish then called David, and he said to him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright, and thy going out and coming in with me is good, good in my sight, for I have not found evil in thee since the day of the coming Unto me and to this day, nevertheless, the Lord's favor thee not. Achish is talking with great regret here, and you can kind of sense it in the wording here. Achish told David, he said, David, you've always been good. You've always been faithful to me. I know you're an Israelite. I'm Philistine. You've lived in our country in Gath. I gave you Ziklag to live there with your families and soldiers. You've been faithful. You never caused any trouble, but the Lord's don't want you in this the lords want you to go back home. The generals, the kings, they want you to go back home. They don't want you to fight in this battle. So Achish wanted him to, but the lords didn't, and he's outnumbered four to one. So, verse 7, Wherefore, now return, said Achish, go in peace, that thou displease not the lords of the Philistines. And David said unto Achish, But... What have I done? Wait a minute. Come on here. Let's get real. David didn't want to fight against the Israelites. But now that he knows he's not going to have to, he's going to act in front of the king as though he really was willing. As he says, and that's what a lot of us do sometimes in life, and that's what David did. He said unto Achish, But what have I done? And what hast thou found in thy servant as so long as I have been with thee unto this day, that I may go fight against the enemies of the Lord, the king. And Achish answered, and he said to David, I know that thou art a good, good in, in my sight, as an angel of God. And I want you to notice something here. Go back to verse 6. There's one thing I actually overlooked. I want you to see, Achish said to David, As the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright. I, I forgot and I overlooked that part. And, and you know what that reason why I want to go back to that? As the Lord liveth. Do you think the Philistines worshipped Israel's God? No, they didn't. So why would Achish say, as the Lord liveth? Had Achish and his friendship come to know David's God? It's possible, but more unlikely. Probably what it was, just a courtesy statement to David. That's the more likely explanation to why he said that. But he says here unto David in verse 9, he said, I know you've been good. You've been like an angel of God. Notwithstanding, the princes of the Philistines have said, he shall not go with us in the battle. Wherefore now rise, rise up early in the morning with thy master's servants. That would be a 600 trained soldiers. 
they have come with you, and as soon as it be early in the morning and you have light, depart. And David and his men rose up early to depart in the morning to return to the land of the Philistines, and the Philistines went up to Jezreel to get ready to fight. David was in a hard, difficult place in his life. He, Saul told him at the end of chapter 26, Saul told him, you're going to be king, I'll leave you alone, go your way, I'll go mine. David didn't trust that. So he thinks, I'm going to go to Philistia and I'll escape Saul and Saul won't kill me and everything will be fine when he should have just trusted God to take care of him. David wasn't perfect. David made a bad choice. It was bad to go into Philistia. That's like us going, leaving church and going out into the world to try to solve our problems when this is where we need to be, trusting God. So David did that, and then he struck up the friendship with Achish, and, and uh, Achish, it came upon a time when they were going to have war with the Philistines. He said, come help us, David. David didn't want to do that. He would not ever want to fight and kill one of his own people. But how is he going to get out of it? How are any of us going to get out of some of the dilemmas we get into in life when we go out into the world, when we get out of the will of God? Only if God rescues us. It would take divine providence and the hand of God to get David out of this dilemma, out of this situation. And that's what happened. For God, when this battle was going to take place, allowed David to be at the end of that parade. And these generals, they saw David and the Israelites, so we don't want them to fight against us. That's an act of providence. That's the providential hand of God. And if you don't believe it, I'm, I'm sorry, but that is. I can see it clearly. And so God delivers David. And David didn't have to fight. And David goes back to Ziklag. But what he found when he got back home, where he went to see his family, it was not a very pretty sight. It was not very good. And we're going to see that in our next study in a couple of weeks. And this battle is about to take place, which would be the ultimate battle where Saul would end up dying in battle. The main thing is, when we get into a hard place in life, let's not leave out of where we need to be in the presence of God and go out into the world to try to find help or to escape, as David did. Let's trust God. It might be difficult. It might be stormy in the time being. But God will never let go of our hand and he'll get us through it. And we'll come out stronger as a result. The main thing we must always trust in the Lord. We must never lean into our own understanding. But acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. That's our lesson for tonight. Thank you for listening.